Today's topic, Mind, Character and Personality, Chapter 3, Dangers in Psychology, Part 2. What we're going to cover in this part is Satan's work to divert the mind of man, the artful insinuation versus the open, bold attack, Youthful mind, his special objective. Satan controls mind not directed by Holy Spirit. Satan controls mind not directed by Holy Spirit. From Adam's day to now, those who know the truth are special targets. Satan diverts minds by controversial subjects. One mind dominating another. And so, let's begin. Satan's work to divert the mind of man. Satan has come right in and placed himself between God and man. It is his work to divert the human mind and he throws his darkened shadow right athwart our pathways so that we cannot discern between God and the moral darkness and corruption and the mass of iniquity that is in our world. Then what are we going to do about the matter? Shall we let that darkness remain? No. There is a power here for us that will bring in the light of heaven to our dark world. Christ has been in heaven and he will bring the light of heaven, drive back the darkness, and let the sunlight of his glory in. Then we shall see, amid the corruption and pollution and defilement, the light of heaven. We must not give up at the defilement that is in the human race, and ever keep that before the mind's eye. We must not look at that. What then are we to do? What is our work? To behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. 1 John 3 verse 1 Manuscript 7, 1888 For this paragraph, or this section, the only thing I need to add is we, we are living in a society in a time where Having conversation about controversial topic can become offensive and sometimes we don't want to, to talk about certain things because we are afraid to offend people. But your ability to think basically gives you an opportunity to offend somebody because in order to think, you need to be willing to possibly offend someone with what is going to come out of your mouth, basically. And the only thing is for that one is that when you get to speak to someone, Satan knows that you may reach the person, that person may walk out of his rank, and he will do anything to make that person feel offended and put you in jeopardy. Part 2 the artful insinuation versus the open, bold attack. If Satan were to make an open and bold attack upon Christianity, it would bring the Christian at once to the feet of his mighty deliverer, who alone could put the adversary to flight. He does not generally do this. He is artful and knows that the most effectual way for him to accomplish his designs is to come to poor, fallen men in the form of an angel of light. In this disguise, he works upon the mind to allure from the safe and right path. 
he has ever been ambitious to counterfeit the work of Christ and establish his own power and claims. He leads deceived mortals to account for the works and miracles of Christ upon scientific principles. He makes them appear as the result of human skill and power. In many minds, he will thus eventually destroy all true faith in Christ as the Messiah, the Son of God. Signs of the Times, November 6, 1884 Well, on this one, I don't think I have anything to say because you either believe that Satan has the power to make you think a certain way or you don't believe in it. Youthful Minds, His Special Objectives It is the special work of Satan in these last days to take possession of the man of the youth, to corrupt their thoughts, and inflame their passions. All of free moral agents, and as such they must bring their thoughts to run in the right channel. Appeal to Mothers, page 30. Well, as I was talking to the kids today, we had a great conversation, and one thing I noticed was Many of the things that they were saying is based from what they watch in TV. And of course, Satan is the one that mostly controls the TV stations, I mean, the music, movies, and, and everything else. And so their thought process was basically being shaped by Satan while I was trying to show them the biblical perspective of things. So, but it was a great conversation. And right now, this right here is just exactly what, what's going on right now. I certainly is doing his best to control the kids of today. Because if he can control them now, they are the ones that are going to be the adult in the future. And that way, he's going to shape the country as well. Part 4. Satan controls mind not directed by the Holy Spirit. Few believe that humanity has sunk so low as it has or that it is so thoroughly bad, so desperately opposed to God as it is. The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Romans 8 verse 7 When the mind is not under the direct influence of the Spirit of God, Satan can mold it as he chooses. All the rational powers which he controls, he will colonize. He is directly opposed to God in his taste, views, preferences, likes and dislikes, choice of things and pursuits. There is no relish for what God loves or approves, but a delight in those things which he despises. Therefore, a course is maintained which is offensive to him, meaning to God. This leads to controversy with those who are trying to walk in the way of the Lord. They, those who oppose truth, will call light darkness and darkness light, good evil and evil good. Letter 8, 1891 this boils down to your thought process, basically. You can assume that what you are doing is good, when in reality it's not good. And this will boil down to your ability to know what is right and what is wrong. But of course, if Satan is the one controlling your mind, then what is wrong becomes right to you, and what is right becomes wrong to you. That's how it goes. From Adam's day to now. Satan has been working at the wheel, turning it until he has the control of all the human minds who have received the lies with which he deceived Eve and then used her as his agent to entice Adam into sin. Satan has kept up his precious working upon human minds from that day to this. Manuscript 19, 1894 And I can guarantee you, nobody can say that 
things are getting better. Everyone can see things are getting worse, except if you are being led by Satan. Those who are following God's principles can see that things are getting worse. Those who know the truth are special targets. Satan is stealthily working to confuse the minds of those who know the truth by bringing in misleading sentiments and misleading examples. Unless they repent and are converted, those who are living divided lives, professedly serving the Lord but at the same time scheming to carry out their own plans, plan which retard the very work which Christ gave his life to accomplish, will be deceived by the enemy of souls. Letter 248-1907 I don't think I have much to comment on this part. Let's move on. Satan diverts minds by controversial subjects. He, the enemy, would be delighted to have minds diverted to any subject by which he might create divisions of sentiment and lead our people into controversy. Manuscript 167, 1897 And the last one, One Mind Dominating Another Satan often finds a powerful agency for evil in the power which one human mind is capable of exerting on another human mind. This influence is so seductive that the person who is being molded by it is often unconscious of its power. God hath bidden me speak warning against this evil. Letter 244, 1907 Alright everybody, so basically what we do have is we need to find a way to to know what is right and wrong. And in most of these things, they have to do with psychology. If you understand how people think and how people act and how they get to believe what they believe and and if you are actually one of those that are fighting to live according to God's principle, you need to do your work to explain to them and help them understand that what they are doing is not the right thing. You need to find a way to show them that by not saying it directly sometimes. Give them examples and see if they can understand it and let them say to themselves, "Um, you need to be better. If you try to tell them that you need to be better, then they're going to get into a defensive mode. And usually when I speak to young children, meaning young adults or young teenagers, I try to show them that the TV and the media is not in their best interest. What they will tell you is, you need to do this and this and this, but they won't tell you to practice what is good. They'll try to tell you to go and do something bad, but try not to get caught. So, that's what's going on nowadays. And Satan is heavily behind this movement from Hollywood, the music industry, and what young kids are watching on the TVs nowadays. So, I think us as parents, or even if you could be a parent, if you are old enough to have kids, and you do love God's principle, it should be your duty to give these kids, these young children growing up something better that you do have or something better than what you learned because you can learn more and you can impart to them the good things so they can carry it forward so that's it for today i will see you another time until then bye for now mother out